Well, hello, church. That's right, I called you church. Remember, that is your identity, that which Jesus Christ laid down his life for. And as a church, we get together, um, whether you're at your home or whether you're one of the people that are here today, um, or whether you're in another state or you're at work watching this, and guess what we do as a church? We worship. We lift our Lord's name on high. And if you remember from last week, we said, Christ is risen, and your response was, he is risen indeed, alleluia. And then we went even a step further in that. And the step further that, um, that we went, we were taught by Pastor Speaks. I'm going to say, Christ is risen. You're going to say, he has risen indeed, and so have I. And then we're going to say, alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, and so have I. Alleluia. There's a beautiful verse in Galatians that talks about for all that have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ in faith. And, and we put on Christ and we die with Christ and when Christ rises, so do we. And so it's a joy to be able to start this worship service to make the beginning of it in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take a moment, bow your head, fold your hands, calm your head, calm your heart, and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, Lord, for bringing us together in all these different locations to lift your name on high. We ask, Lord, that it honor you, and we ask, Lord, that it would bring you joy, and we ask, Lord, that um, it would keep us strong in faith until um, we meet together in person. All this we ask in your most precious and holy name. Amen. We start off a new sermon series, and that series is it's all about Jesus. And it takes a look at things that are in the Old Testament and things that are in the New Testament and shows how they all point to Christ. So you have two scripture readings. The first scripture reading is from Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, if you want to grab your Bible, verses 17 through 19. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. 
In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The second scripture reading is going to be from the New Testament, and that's going to be from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 and through 22. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall be all made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Amen. At this point, we invite Pastor Wood up for the children's message. Well, hey, boys and girls. Um, it is a joy to be with you today. It's springtime. Um, and one thing that I really get excited about during springtime is planting a garden. Any of you plant a garden? Uh, maybe you have flowers in your front yard uh, that look really pretty and make your house look nice. Uh, maybe you plant vegetables. Maybe uh, your mom or your dad uh, plant herbs kind of in a window basket, something like that. I really like planting things in my garden. Now, uh, if you were Pastor Johnson, you'd say we'd have to wait another month, and so we'll do that. But I have some seeds with me today that I'm excited to plant. Um, maybe you have some of these things in your garden. These are green beans. I love eating fresh green beans. Sometimes I can't even wait to get them inside, and I just pick them right off of the plant, and they taste so sweet. Uh, if you're going, ew, maybe then you like carrots. Uh, carrots are one of the vegetables that my kids really enjoy. And maybe if you're not a vegetable person, uh, maybe you like sweet melon. So let me ask you about these seeds. Um, could I just open this thing of green bean seeds up and eat them and be like, ooh, they're so delicious. What do you think of that? Now some of you are saying, yeah, go ahead and do it. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to do it. Because I've done it before on a dare, and it is not green beans that you eat. Um, can you, when you plant these in your garden, and you see the very first green come out of the dirt, can you go over to that and eat it and say, Mmm, that melon is delicious. No, you can't. What about when it gets a little bit taller and, and you see little flowers start blooming on it and you get a little bit excited that, that the fruit is going to come and then you go out there and you pick the flower and you eat it. Did you just eat the fruit? No. No, you didn't. You see, we have to wait, don't we? We have to wait until we see fruit start to come on the plant. And when we see the first fruit come on the plant, that's a promise. Jesus uh, gives us this promise uh, through his servant, St. Paul. You heard it in our reading today that Jesus is called the first fruits of all of those who have fallen asleep. Now, I want you to think, um, just a week ago, we celebrated something. What was it? Yeah, Easter, that's right. And on Easter, what does Jesus do for us? Yeah, he rises from the dead. And he says that he is the first one of all of us who are going to do that very same thing. Jesus gives us life. Jesus is promise that God is going to make us all alive with Jesus. Now, this doesn't just happen when we die someday. But right now, today, you are alive in Jesus. Right in front of me is a baptismal font. Some of you were baptized right here. I know all of you have seen this before uh, when we usually gather in the sanctuary. And in this baptismal font, uh, you were made alive with Jesus. 
you were buried with Jesus in his tomb and everything yucky and connected to sin in you was drowned here. So that you would be made alive. So this spring, when you plant your garden, remember that promise. This summer, as you see the the plants grow up out of the ground, think of Jesus making you alive so that you would bear fruit. Just as he makes you alive and bears fruit. Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, we thank you that you love us. We thank you that you make us alive. Remind us of your promise that because you are alive, we are alive also. And that because you bear fruit, we are bearing fruit also. Teach us how to love you and love others. Amen. Well, thank you, boys and girls, for coming to the children's message today. Uh, I now invite us all to sing together.
Lord Jesus, we thank you uh, that you are alive and well, that you are victorious over all things in this world and in any world anywhere. We thank you uh, that you come to us in moments like this to show us yourself. We ask you that you would uh, pour your spirit out on all of your people, that we would hear your word this morning and that we would be changed by it as we are shaped more and more into your image, dear Jesus. We pray these things in your powerful name. Amen. So we are beginning a brand new sermon series this Easter season called It's All About Jesus. Uh, I would suggest that if you have not yet uh, picked up the discipleship book, if you uh, don't have that copy, if you haven't downloaded it yet, go to the website and please do that. There are some very helpful tools that will help you come along on this journey. Um, This particular series starts on page 39 if you're looking for that right now. Now, this series is all about Jesus, and it's all about what happens between when he rises from the dead and when he ascends into heaven. Luke tells us that Jesus spent the 40 days after his resurrection appearing to his disciples, and we have some of those accounts, but he also spent those 40 days basically taking them to school. That Jesus was the one on 11 tutor opening all of the scriptures up, saying to his disciples, here's how this points to me. Here's who I really am. Now you can imagine all of the aha moments that they had, or all of the moments were like, now Jesus, could you really just kind of unravel this for us? Like, we think this might be about you. What does that mean? And instead of having a pastor like me or the other guys uh, that you know and love uh, teaching you, you had the guy who wrote it. You had the one who was prophesied saying, yeah, let me blow your minds now. Let me show you what you need to know to know who I am so that you can then be the ones that start my church here and around the globe. And dear friends, it is because of this 40-day crash course on Scripture that you and I are worshiping this Jesus uh, 2,000 years later in a place far, far away uh, from where he wandered. This first image of Jesus that we're going to look at is really the first image that we have in all of Scripture. The first person, Adam. Now, uh, to go all the way back to Adam and Eve, uh, let's just get there for a second and let's remember what it was like walking hand in hand with God. Tending flocks with God. Standing alongside him in his garden saying, where would you like me to prune this branch? Or are these fruits ripe for harvest yet? Knowing that he knew everything about you and loved you deeply. But you know that that story doesn't continue on forever. You know that the deceiver comes and that when he comes... Adam buys into a lie. And the lie is a very simple one. The first thing that uh, the devil says is, did God really say you shouldn't eat from that tree? And when Eve and Adam, because Adam was standing right next to her when this is all going on, if you don't believe me, uh, read back through Genesis chapter 3. You'll see that Adam was standing there silently as all this was going on. The first thing that Satan says is, did God really say don't eat that? And the first answer is, yeah, he said don't eat that. They knew the truth. And then the devil comes back at him again. And he says, God doesn't want you to eat that so that you won't die. He just doesn't want you to be like him. What's really interesting to me in reading this passage again, and, and I've read this passage a whole bunch, and I just picked up on this this week. 
Who in all of creation bore the image of God more than Adam? Nobody. Nothing. If we, if we remember how Adam came to be, we hear God, the Trinity, having this conversation amongst themselves, saying, let us make mankind in our own image, in our own likeness. And so God rolls up his sleeves like he didn't do for anything else that he had made. He rolls up his sleeves and he gets down into the dust and he shapes out and he fashions a picture of himself. And he breathes life into it. Satan attacks Adam's truest identity. Satan says to Adam, you don't currently bear the image of God. He's holding something back from you. And Adam buys the lie. And from then on, our entire story, the story of humanity, the story of all of us, is tainted with sin. Because after that lie crept into the psyche of humanity that we could never measure up to our God, that he never wants to have anything to do with us, all sorts of lies come in. Because if Satan can get you to forget who you are, he can get you to do anything. And so we look around our world and we, we trace it back through history and, and since that moment in time we've had hatred, we've had murder, we've had lust, we've had greed, we've had all sorts of things that make our world sometimes a very, very dark place. And eventually, Satan would get us to believe that there just isn't any way out. He would get us so confused that just last week on Friday afternoon, we heard Pilate with the author of truth right in front of him ask a question. He asked Jesus, and what exactly is truth? Paul reminds us of the truth. If you open your Bible again, if you need to go get it, um, do so. But open your Bible again to 1 Corinthians 15. I would suggest uh, maybe later on today or uh, maybe tomorrow throughout the week, read this whole chapter, and then once you're through it, read it again, and then once you're through it, read it again until you start to remember what is going on here. We pick up in verse 20, but Paul is in the middle of an argument. He's dealing again with people who are wondering what the truth is about Jesus, specifically connected to Easter. There have always been people who have said that Christ rose from the dead and that they saw him. But right alongside them, there have always been people who have said that it is impossible, that it doesn't make any sense. And so you have Paul speaking to people who don't understand what Easter really means for them. Verse 20, our key verse out of here, verses 20 through 22, Paul says this. He says, but in fact, in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Do you hear the promise here? Paul says that it's not just good enough for Jesus to come into the world and kind of slap a band-aid on all of its brokenness. And it's not just good enough for Jesus to come into the world and heal all part of it. And it's not just good enough for him to come in and act surgically to remove all of the bad stuff and leave behind all the good stuff. Paul says that Jesus was way more radical than that. He, he says that Jesus literally started creation over. That when Jesus says, behold, I am making all things new, he really was. And so here is the truth that you need to know that Paul reminds us of that Jesus taught his disciples during these 40 days. You are not abandoned by God. 
that when God sees the problems that you are going through and when you throw up your hands and you say, where are you? Your cry doesn't somehow just resonate into emptiness. But it falls upon the ears and it falls upon the heart of a loving God who would in fact put on humanity and come to you. That this is what Jesus did. God hasn't abandoned you. He sent Jesus. And every single place where Adam fell and where you and I fall down, Jesus stood tall. He puts on human flesh and he stands face to face with the evil one who tempts him. You might remember this. It takes place right after Jesus' baptism. He tempts Jesus and he gets him to question his own identity as the Son of God. And Jesus says, I don't, I don't need to prove to you who I am by doing the things that you want me to do, by, by turning stones into bread, by falling down and worshiping you, by leaping off of the temple. In fact, I am who I am, and I'm going to prove it to you by walking to the cross. And so Jesus tells the truth, and Jesus stands in the truth. And wherever Adam fell, Jesus stood tall. Adam was bound to death. You and I are also. So was Jesus. That when he walked here as a man for me and you, he was bound to death. And we have seen his death, and it was heinous. And yet the good news that came on the third day is that Jesus rose from the dead and stood tall out of the grave, bringing Life into the world in a way that had never been visible before. Satan would get us to believe there's no way out of the situation that we're in. And Jesus stands tall and says, I am the way. We would say that, that truth is indecipherable. That it's so hard to find out in the world. And, and Jesus would say, but I am the truth. And because we have bought into the lie so often and we believe of ourselves that the only way out of this world is death, and we see it surround us, and Jesus says, yeah, but I am the resurrection and the life. Paul reminds us that just like the garden we were speaking about with the kids, Jesus is first. He's the first fruit on the vine. And the first fruit on the vine is the promise that there's going to be more and more fruit. Dear friends, here's the truth about you. You are alive in Christ. And the day that you fully realize that, it's in the future sometime. Whenever Jesus returns in victory, but right now, today, in this moment, you are alive in Christ. You have been raised with him. The sin that has had its hold on you no longer does because Jesus took it to that cross. And that's where it died. So where are you bringing life these days? As we make our way through the world in the name of Christ, you and I are life bringers. You and I are truth tellers. You and I stand strong because Jesus stood strong for us. Dear friends, uh, as we make our way through these next weeks, the truth uh, that you need to know about Jesus is that Christ is risen. He has risen indeed, and so are you. We pray. Lord God, we ask you that each and every day you would remind us of our true heritage. Not one that leads us to darkness and death, but one that through Jesus leads us into life now and for all eternity. We ask you that you would daily and even moment by moment speak the truth to us. That Christ 
has conquered and that he has conquered for us and that absolutely we are worth it. That everything that we have seen Jesus do, he did for us so that we would start over, start fresh in him. Heavenly Father, as we worship you this day, we thank you for the daily bread which you provide. And we ask that you would receive these tithes and these offerings that we offer to you this day as gifts from humble hearts. And we ask you that you would use them and multiply them to do your work here and wherever you see fit. We pray these things all in the name of Jesus our Lord, who is risen from the dead. Amen. We sing together. In the darkness we were waiting Without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt Pray
Amen. What a, what a way to begin a new sermon series, right? All about Jesus. And in the way that, uh, that, that the Spirit led uh, Pastor Wood to unpack Scripture, Christ, Christ does as he points back all the way through and has been present in all that we read in his love story to you and I. I want to invite you to do something, uh, whoever you're with or if between you and your Savior, to in just a moment hit pause to reflect on this past week as we enter into this sermon series all about Jesus. I want to invite you to, to share how you've seen Jesus this past week. So if you're with some people, share that now or between you and your Savior. Hit pause. How have you seen Jesus this past week? It's all about Jesus. And that's who we go to in prayer now. Heavenly Father, we see a Savior present at the beginning of creation. A Savior that exists with your people. We see a Savior born in a manger who lives the perfect life, who heals, who forgives sins. A Savior, the way, the truth, the life, who goes to the cross to make all things new, to step into the midst of our brokenness and sin and give us life. Resurrection life, Easter life, and, and a Savior, Jesus, who is present still today in the midst of lives. A victorious Savior that, that lifts our eyes to the cross and reminds us in the midst of all that troubles, in the midst of all that hurts, in the midst of all that brings worry, dear Lord, in the midst of, of sickness, in the midst of of financial worry, in the midst of, of jobs that are, are lost, in the midst of health concerns, dear Lord, in the midst of, of homes that are now schools, in the midst of distancing, in the midst of, of death, in the midst of so much, dear Lord, that we, we worry about, that, that burdens us. Remind us. That you are an ever-present Savior that is with us, by our side, that walks with us today. For you are the resurrected Christ that makes all things new. So dear Lord, let that be our song these days. That we are Easter people and that our King is the Savior of all. In your name, amen. We want to invite you, wherever you're at, go ahead and cup those hands. Extend them forward. Imagine, imagine water filling your hands as the very word of God fills your week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We sing.
a few announcements after worship um, that we want to make you aware of. First and foremost, um, keep up to date every Monday morning with announcements from Pastor Keith, and that tells you a little bit about what's going on through the week. Last week, you heard about Bible studies that started. Um, mine started on Wednesday night, and it's about the role of a disciple. Um, a great turnout on that first week. Really thankful. I'm um, looking forward to these future weeks. You can find out information on that on the website and register for it. In addition, Pastor Speaks is Thursday morning, and on Thursday morning, he's talking about stress and anxiety um, and looking at that with a biblical perspective during this time. Once again, these Bible studies are things that um, draw you closer to your Lord and keep you in community with other people, and that's just a joy. Uh, Pastor Chad, I thought you were going to invite him for free donuts in just a moment after worship. But I'll have you. I'll have the donuts, but <laughs> I'm going to eat them because right. there's not all of you to eat them. That's right. We love uh, everything happening with Bible studies. Uh, keep in mind, uh, next gen folks. There's kind of a rhythm that we've established. Uh, story time with uh, Miss Rachel. That's Tuesdays and Thursdays. Also, Children's Ministry has a Facebook group. If you weren't aware of that, you'll be able to find it. They are posting. All sorts of supplements to worship, um, encouragement, article, all sorts of stuff there. So, so look for that Facebook group, Hales Corners Children's Ministry. Um, also, keep in mind for a family conversation, there's Couch Connect that's released each week on Thursday, uh, kind of promoting faith conversation in the home. All you confirmation aged folks, there's been emails going out, there's been faith testimony information sent out. Updates on Confirmation Church, the last Confirmation Church uh, service of the year. That's going to be sent out. And there's also information coming regarding Confirmation Sunday, which is typically the first Sunday in May. So look for all that information. I have a few. That's why they made me last. So uh, the first one, Ebenezer Food Drive. You've heard us uh, in the last couple of weeks talking about the needs at Ebenezer. Basically, they're now able to serve more than twice as many people as they had been. And so the need for food is up. And uh, so Monday, April 20th from 3 to 6, right here uh, in the main parking lot at Hales Corners Lutheran, you can come and drive through your food. So what will happen is you will have volunteers uh, with masks and gloves and all the precautions. You won't leave your car. Uh, you'll simply hand out uh, the food donation that you have or open your trunk or however that's going to work, but the volunteers will take that from you and get it uh, down to Ebenezer to feed people. If you can be a part of that, uh, be a part of that. Again, April 20th, it's a Monday from 3 to 6. If you know of people who are uh, going into the hospital, uh, you also know that we can't, as pastors like we normally would, go and see people but we're asking you to still let us know for two reasons. One, we can still pray for you. Uh, and two, uh, if you do want a visit, if you're going to have an extended stay, we can still call you on the phone and speak with you that way and just keep up with you and keep you in prayer and those kinds of things. So please uh, continue to call the church office with those sorts of things and let us know of your different needs that you have. Wednesdays at 2.30... Uh, Pastor Keith is starting something called a digital prayer book, right? right. And so what's going to happen is uh, all the way up until Tuesday, you can send in prayer requests either directly to Pastor Keith on Facebook or through a Facebook post that will be made live every week or through the church website. He'll take all of those, and then Wednesday at 2.30, at what would have normally been live from the pastor's office, is going to instead be this digital prayer book time where Pastor Keith will be with you and teach on prayer, a short devotion, and then also uh, literally pray through all those prayer requests that are sent in. So please uh, be a part of that as you have need and as you are able. Uh, with that, uh, have a fantastic week in the Lord, and we'll see you the next time we are worshiping together.